uh, let's uh, start. We are with uh, Christo Georgiev. Uh, so first, uh, Christo, uh, introduce yourself with a couple of words. Yeah, so my name is Christo. Um, I'm currently uh, working in several different projects uh, in Switzerland uh, in technology. And uh, I studied at AOBG between 2012 and 2016. And uh, then I founded Centrida with uh, Phil Pierce. And uh, yeah, then uh, three years later, the company was sold to a scale focus and I moved to Switzerland. Thank you. Uh, you're, uh, as I know, the founder of the hub, uh, which is a really important uh, club for the students in uh, AUBG. Uh, can you t tell us more about the founding uh, itself and uh, when it happened and uh, how it happened? We founded uh, the hub in 2000. Uh, 15 at um, autumn and actually the original name of the club wasn't the hub it was uh, AOPG spaces and the idea behind the club was um, that at that time um, at AOPG computer science and information systems and all the technical disciplines were interesting mostly from um, let's say more theoretical point of view and we wanted to um, enable students to be closer to the industry, to provide them more opportunities to be exposed to companies and to start their career early on. And um, the current club that uh, was active there that was representing the computer science department uh, was, I would say, mostly passive in these endeavors. So we saw an opportunity, me and uh, to, you know, another peer of mine. And... Um, we basically started the club. Um, how we started it, we essentially, um, well, first we tried to join the club and it was called the Computer Science Student Union. Uh, it didn't work out. And so we decided to make a club of our own and uh, to promote the ideas that we thought were useful. And um, in retrospective, it turned out that uh, this was exactly what uh, the student body needed. And um, now, as it's and what I really like is that the way we envisioned the club as it was before um, when we started is this vision has been kind of carried over by the uh, people who have uh, carried the torch. So all the um, presidents and uh, the management of the club that uh, succeeded us has actually made a great job into growing the club in what we um, originally wanted it to be and uh, really developed it very far. But it really started as uh, two students who basically wanted to make uh, computer science more exciting and more practical. Um, and we also wanted to kind of uh, have a more of a sense of a community in the computer science um, student body. So I guess we kind of managed to succeed this. And uh, are you still part of uh, the hub and the club? Um, currently, I'm mostly kind of supporting the club financially, and I do have contact with some of its members. We keep in touch. And uh, do you think such student associations um, are important? Uh, because not every university has a club uh, formed by students. and. Uh, uh, I think it's important uh, because uh, it can form many skills that uh, will be important at later points in the career, such as communication, uh, organization work, uh, teamwork. And uh, yeah, do you think uh, that it is important for one university and one and the students uh, to form such a club like the hub and to mm. maybe organize events and to support each other? Yeah, so the idea behind uh, student clubs, it's uh, something that has been kind of um, mostly begetted by the American uh, education system. And it's something that's quite common in American universities. Um, in the case of uh, the hub and uh, students club at the American University in Bulgaria, uh, we are very kind of, we well, the club is a very professionally oriented club, which means that the idea of the club is not for entertainment and just, you know, 
um, having fun there, such student organizations, it's very also focused on, well, having fun on one side or organizing fun events, but also uh, getting a head start uh, in your career. And um, I think it's very important because when you start university and you enter, you have um, certain perceptions of how things are in the industry and how things are in the world. And um, being part of such clubs um, kind of really widens your view on how things actually work in the industry, in computer science, um, you know, what kind of skills you need. Um, and it's also very, very um, important to be able to kind of um, build relationships with people you like. So to, in general, meet people you like um, at some common space and uh, build relationships with them because I think this really, really helps later on in, in life when you know people graduate. And I've also uh, been quite, quite of an avid supporter of every person who has uh, been part of the club, even you know, even though I'm not a president or um, I'm still part of it and I'm still trying to support the people. And this is kind of like the sense of community um, that these types of students could form that uh, really help out a lot uh, later in life. So yeah, I really think it's a, it's a great thing to have. Thank you. And uh, now can you tell us about uh, Hack uh, AUBG? Uh, back in the day, as I know, it was uh, Bogo uh, Hack Bogograd. Uh, yeah. And yeah, are there any differences uh, now compared to when you were in uh, a student in the AUBG informing the club? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a funny question because we didn't have anything like that. Um, we, we did have uh, start the Bogograd which was um, by, made by the startup club, which I'm not sure if it still exists, the club itself and um, uh, the event. But back then, um, you know, doing entrepreneurship and doing computer science um, as a, you know, academic discipline were kind of disjoint, I would say. They weren't really the same thing. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to do, a, a part of, uh, you know, boosting the careers of the students is to actually bring those two together. So back then it was, you know, startup events and computer science events and no intersection. Um, but now I think uh, what we managed to do with Hack Aubege, well, not me personally, but um, the hub was that um, the, the basically now this events, um, this event represents this intersection between computer science and entrepreneurship and um, all the skills and initiatives in between. So I think it's a really like um, the, you know, tech uh, startup or technology focused um, startup event of the university right now. And um, it's really something we wanted to do to basically um, bring academia and the more practical entrepreneurial business part together into this event. And I think for the future, it will also be good that, you know, academia and um, this kind of like an applied hands-on approach uh, become closer and closer and uh, people kind of start forming um, companies that are based on academic research or something that's, you know, more deep technology kind of stuff. So this will be like, something that would be super exciting. Thank you. Uh, and all this is happening in uh, Bogograd. And uh, yeah, what do you think about uh, the city? Because uh, uh, many people say that it can be the next site hub of Bulgaria because it's uh, it's in a golden part of Bulgaria. It's near, to, it's near the capital, it's near Macedonia, it's yeah. near Greece. So it is uh, really in the, yeah. Uh, surrounded mm -hmm. by opportunities. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the, one of the good things about uh, Blagojevgrad is, um, in in comparison to bigger cities like Sofia, is that um, it if you want to do something with technology, it's really great because um, it allows you to, it's the type of, it's a small town, that's for sure, but it's not a disadvantage. It's, um, it's the surroundings are really good so that you can really kind of relax and focus on whatever you want to do. So either studying or working on um, a project. So I think 
the fact that it's a small town and everything is nearby and uh, the surroundings are also amazing. Um, you know, the mountains are nearby and um, there are a lot of opportunities to do, you know, other things. It's, it's generally, um, I think it's, it's a place that has a great potential, not only because the university is located there, but because of the surroundings and the fact that um, it's a really nice calm place where you can sit down and focus on the things that are really important. So, yeah, but of course there's, there, there are um, stronger points to be in Sofia, but um, I don't think people are at a, any kind of a disadvantage, um, you know, starting initiatives um, and following them through in Belgrade. I think it's a great place. Okay, thank you. So now uh, let's talk uh, a little about uh, Centurida. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, the company, the startup and the creation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think back in 2016? Mm -hmm. No, it was actually 2015. Um, oh, yeah, okay. it's a yeah, it's a it's a it's a funny story because um, well, my idea was to actually um, have the club and the company being run in parallel, some so in, in a way that um, you know you can be part of the club, but if you want to actually start uh, a career early on while you, while you are still studying at the university, you can do it so uh, by joining the company. And um, there was a very, I would say, in the beginning, um, kind of a very positive relationship between the club and the, uh, the, club and the company because, uh, you know, we kind of managed to pull a lot of people in, in the company, uh, our initial employees uh, from the club. Uh, regarding the founding story, it actually started in 2015 in the summer, and uh, the founding team was a little bit different in the beginning. I started with um, one... Um, so basically with uh, Robert, one guy who was from Blagojevgrad, who studies uh, who studied, uh, in the UK at the time, and Taylor, um, who was uh, a graduate of the university. And I was uh, in the US um, on the West Coast in San Francisco on the summer entrepreneurship program that uh, was kind of uh, one, it's, it's a, um, it's a small prime pack, but Okay, so uh, tell us more about uh, Century, the, uh, tell us about the creation. Uh, I think it was uh, back in uh, 2015 or 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was actually in the summer 2015. Um, I was in the US and um, on the West Coast in San, in San Francisco. And I was on the summer entrepreneurship program, which was um, funded by the Bulgar America for Bulgaria Foundation. And I was one of the participants there. And um, it, we're basically there uh, learning more about the, you know, the, the entrepreneurship um, kind of culture in the US. And uh, this also exposed me to a lot of uh, startups, to a lot of founders, to a lot of uh, people doing uh, various projects. And I had this idea, you know, we had as an exercise to start a company. And uh, I kind of, I guess I kind of took it seriously. And uh, well, the thing we were, we were doing there didn't really <laughs> turn out to be anything. But from the contacts I made there, I actually managed to get a bunch of uh, quite interesting projects to work on. And I promised uh, the people there, hey, you know, we have a team, we have everything, we can uh, develop whatever you want. And uh, I guess they really bought it. So when I went back to Bulgaria, I shared this uh, idea with another friend of mine, um, Gabriel, and he was like, well, that's great. You know, let's do it. It's our last year. And <laughs> so, uh, and then actually in parallel, we kind of started the club as well. And the idea was that, uh, we would have the club and the company running in parallel. Um, and that was where, like at the end of uh, 2015 at the winter. And we kind of uh, found out that there's a very kind of a, a symbiotic relationship between the club and the company. And we could uh, attract some of the students in the club and the company who wanted to kind of really jumpstart their career. And then we connected 
basically then with the people who um, in the US who gave us the projects and we actually started executing on those uh, projects and those contacts I had from the US. And uh, yeah, this is how, how pretty much it started. We, it was, I think, it, well, um, at, at the point where in 2016, when we were about to graduate, um, we're like so much into doing, you know, day-to-day -day operational work, uh, you know, keeping uh, everybody up to date, running the projects, um, basically, you know, doing real company stuff that we didn't really have time to look for a job or, you know, anything. So we, we had to decide, you know, okay, now we're graduating and we have to actually make a decision. Are we going to keep doing this or are we gonna, we're going to like look for a job or, you know, look some, for something to do after you graduate. So, um, and, and there's where the university actually stepped in. And uh, we talked to some of the professors, basically asking for advice. And they were like, well, we have this space in, in Sofia, uh, in the Leaf Center. It's a, it's a really like nice space and we don't have anything to do with it. Maybe you guys can, you know, have it. And, you know, we'll figure out what you're going to do with the rent later. Uh, and we're like, oh, well, <laughs> great. So we can, you know, move to Sofia and uh, kind of open a, an office there. We already actually had an office in Bulgaria. We rented uh, one of the, well, it, it, I think it used to be some sort of a shop, like selling clothes or something, but we kind of rented the space and we bought a bunch of uh, uh, desks and, and, and chairs and we made them together with uh, some of the employees. And, you know, we had a small office, but the idea of moving to Sofia um, to like, a, well, the, the second office, I wouldn't say it was also a proper office. It was actually a classroom uh, that <laughs> like the chairs and the tables were still laying around and uh, we actually had to kind of, you know, clean it up and make it into a proper office, but it was still a classroom, but it was in, in, in Sofia. So we're in the middle of students kick up. Um, uh, yeah, and this is basically, you know, how it started. Uh, the rest was pretty much, um, well, uh, it was it was quite of a ride. But I think the 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 first um, the first months and the year were like uh, absolutely, um, I think, pretty yeah, pretty intense. And a, a funny story from there is for when we didn't have internet. Um, so the the building was uh, nice and everything, but they only had the internal internet for the university. And it was one of the universities building. Um, buildings in the capital and they couldn't give us like uh, internet access so we had to ask one of uh, ask one of the internet providers in Sofia to give us internet but they said well well we don't have actually any access to that building and uh, so we cannot provide you any internet and then we're like oh no what are we going to do um, and we decided to actually get the internet from uh, a store nearby and we asked like the lady who was uh, the store manager there to kind of uh, give access to her uh, basement so that uh, the internet can comp internet company can come and install internet in her basement. So, and then we actually pulled a cable from the building that was next to our building. And then we got the cable up into our building through the window and that's how we had internet. So yeah, uh, that's how we started. It was pretty, pretty funny times. And in the meantime, for the time we didn't have internet, we had to use our cell phones. And back then we had to pay for the internet connection on like for the, you know, uh, bandwidth. So I think we made like, I had to pay a, quite a lot of money because I was getting uh, internet from my phone to like everybody working. So yeah, <laughs> it, it actually that's, that's when we found out how many people you can connect to a mobile device before it actually Kind of gives up <laughs> yeah okay thank you so it sounds like uh, a great adventure actually and uh, yeah but maybe the good thing about uh, having a classroom as an office is that uh, you already have desks uh so yeah, <laughs> yeah we actually <laughs> that's nice yeah, one. <laughs> that, that, that was a good thing you know at least you didn't have to buy any tables like the chairs were yeah. great you had to bring in the chairs but we had tables yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you and uh, despite all those challenges uh, you are at this young age uh, uh, founding a successful startup so uh, how do you feel feel about uh, the whole adventure with scale focus buying the central focus mm -hmm. 
Saint Peter, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was actually uh, at the time of the company it was bought. I wasn't. Um, I already sold my shares. So I wasn't part of the company. But up to that point, um, I guess it was. It, it was. It was quite. Quite a lot of fun, uh, but founding a company at a young age, I don't think it's it's uh, something like uh, immensely impressive. Um, I think it was mostly thanks to the support that we had. Uh, one side from the pretty strong um, alumni network we had from our university, uh, and the other side from the uh, university administration itself, which you know provided us this office, and you know from the third side from pretty much everybody around us. Um, even also like the students themselves who in the very beginning, you know, agreed to work for us at a pretty, you know, with a, well, the salaries weren't great in the beginning. Um, so, you know, having all this support, I think um, really kind of empowered us um, to be able to, you know, build a company and get it off the ground. But, you know, st st starting just by yourself, um, at, at a young age without any support is pretty much impossible. So, yeah, I, I'm thankful for that. And, you know, everything that happened after that is actually a product of this initial push that we had that enabled us to, you know, kind of um, get the ball rolling and uh, to get some initial traction with projects and things to work on. But, uh, you know, the things that uh, basically, um, led to the sell to scale focus is mostly uh, the fact that we already had a few successful projects that, that we did with companies associated with scale focus so you know they they, they kind of already kind of well they were like on a spree of like the acquiring spree back then they acquired i think of netics as well so it was uh, kind of like a, i guess a natural move thank you and uh what uh, did the American University uh, give to you as a, as an engineer and developer? Uh, did the education there affect your career later? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, the university itself, uh, the special thing about the American University in Bulgaria is that it really gives you, um, I would say, kind of like a more world, a, a, a kind of a, a more general view of, of, of the world. Uh, it's, it's a very international university. So um, I think one of the great things it gives you is that it kind of teaches you how to deal in an international environment. And, um, as an engineer, I think it's very, it's actually crucial because uh, if you want to work on big and complex things, you have to, you know, first of all, be able to operate in a very international environment um, and also a very competitive one. So these two things really prepared me, um, not as an engineer, but I would say more as a, as a person. Um, from an engineering perspective, um, I mean, you can you can learn a lot from university, but I, I think it's mostly kind of a, a well you know engineering in general is well it's partially a team sport, but it's it's not um, you have you have to put in the work mostly yourself, right? Um, of course, you have to work with uh, other people on assignments and and so on and so forth, but it, on a big extent, it's 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 a more of like a personal initiative, uh, how far and how deep you can go on a certain subject. So in this regard, um, well, the university did really meet me with some really amazing people that I'm still in contact with even today. So this is, I guess, in, in pure technical uh, terms um, and perspective, this is something that really, um, really empowered me um, to, you know, push myself further um, into some subjects that actually made me in the end a better um, engineer. Thank you. So let's go back to Hack AUBG. Uh, you're going to be a judge uh, mm -hmm. on the hackathon. So uh, is it going to be your first time uh, to be a judge? On um, it, 
Well, <laughs> it, I, I don't know how to answer this, but I, I guess yes and no. I think I was, um, I think I was in Hak uh, in 2016, but I, well, I, I'm not really like a, a big fan of uh, being a judge or like uh, participating in a judging committee for these hackathons. Um, I was actually most mostly a participant than a judge in my life so far. Um, the only the only kind of reason I'm doing this is to support the club and to you know also kind of uh, keep myself uh, engaged with the community. So it's uh, yeah I, I don't I don't regard the experience as something uh, big or something special. I, I'm more also there to just uh, you know enjoy myself and uh, spend some fun time supporting my club. Thank you. And uh, what uh, will you look for uh, in the participants uh, and their products? Uh, what will be the, uh, of leading importance to you? Yeah. Well, for me, it's it's really uh, um, it's if they apply critical thinking um, in their in their uh, strategy and product development. Um, from from what I mean, critical thinking is that did they really think about um, the right things uh, that are important for um, their customers? So I, I think it's very important. Um, whatever you're working on, that at the end of the day, when you actually show it to the to the to the world, that it's it is something. Um, truly thought out so when people sit and it's like wow this is this is exactly what i wanted and this wow effect is something that um very very little uh, people achieve just because um the whole approach is very difficult it's one of the most difficult things um in 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 that of you know developing products and uh, building companies is to actually uh, feel your customers feel their needs um it's something that sounds really simple and um and and a lot of people kind of get um well they, they kind of are led to believe that they actually figured it out but it's something that requires a lot of focus and attention um and a lot of critical thinking to actually first start with Hey, why am I even working on this idea? You know, um, what what does it bring? Uh, how it's gonna it's going to you know change the world? Uh, is it going to shape it in a better way? Um, so this sort of critical thinking um, and also strategy and hey, you know, why am I working on this? And how am I going to make it into something that will actually you know affect people um, in, in the world in the long term? Um, this is something for, that's um, essential for me to, to see this kind of thinking, um, very customer customer centric and also very um, critical and um, I would say aware of the risks and aware of all the cases. Thank you. And what about if there are maybe uh, two products that are equally good? Uh, what will be the <laughs> determination factor? Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, you know, uh, one's gotta go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think it's the vision. So, the the product that has the the very long term thinking. Let's say, you know, something that you can say, well, it might not work today, or it might not be great today, or it might take you know five to ten years to for it to truly flourish. But when it does, it's going to be really big because I think in the examples we've seen um, lately is that, um, you know, some companies are in the making several years before they really kind of explode and become um, really sh kind of, you know, shape the world, especially when you're dealing with uh, very difficult things and very deep technologies there are there's just a lot of difficulty into figuring out the, the right way, the right processes, um, you know, and, and this takes time. So I think I'm going to aim for something that's really long-term is going to, is going to become big. So if there are two companies, I'll really go for the one that has a really kind of a 
strong vision for the future and is kind of and and its founding team is really aware of how the world is going to be shaped in the next you know let's say 10 to 20 years thank you and one final question uh, can you give uh, advice like maybe three major points uh, for uh, those who who want to, to make their own startup for those who have a great yeah. idea but they uh, they are afraid or they walk themselves uh, from going uh, further one step further yeah oh i guess there's there's plenty of advice uh, on the internet <laughs> yeah um <laughs> but uh yeah but it's not personal now it's going I mean, to be personal yeah, yeah sure sure i mean every, every you know everybody's great at giving advice and uh yeah but sure um yeah I, I think, well, if I have to think of three things, yeah. Uh, well, the first thing before even starting, I think, is um, people have to think for for themselves, um, as in introspectively, um, if you want to start something how is it going to affect your life and why you're starting this? Um, I think a lot of people start companies for the wrong reasons. Um, they, I've seen a lot of people who, who try to impress somebody uh, to, by starting a company or they feel kind of unaccomplished and they say, well, now I'm going to start a company and I'll, I'll you know, suddenly be super accomplished or, um, they, or they just want to make a lot of money. So out of greed. So I think none of these reasons really make sense. I think the people who really truly succeed is that um, they they really believe that uh, whatever they're going to build is um, really going to have an impact. Um, so I, I guess it's, it's really like, if you really think you can make something, um, all, the, all the kind of uh, cool things that are going to to come with it, which is, you know, fame, success, whatever, which in the end of the matter um, are actually kind of relevant. Honestly, if, if you build a build company, uh, if you want to kind of make something great, uh, all the other things are going to come. Um, so it's it's a really personal thing um, to to go on this path because uh, I think it really, really looks um, glorious or kind of uh, cool, uh, but it's actually, um, you know, it's a life path that's pretty, pretty difficult. Um, and personally, a, a very, um, very, very taxing um, on the person. So you really have to be sure you're doing the right thing. Um, second of all, um, the second advice I'll give is, um, I really handle the responsibility because if you start a company, um, you're going to, you know, I think a lot of people think, well, yeah, I'm going to be my own boss or, or whatever, uh, which is really actually the complete opposite of that because when you have a company, you're having, uh, you're dealing with tremendous responsibility and um, also tremendous power. So, I mean, you're dealing with, first of all, you're dealing, you know, with your family, uh, with your investors, so basically your board, with the employees, with your customers. So all these people, um, if you screw up, are partially going to be kind of uh, affected by your by you screwing up. So, you know, in, in some extent. So, it is very important to be able to take responsibility first for your actions, and second to, you know, also think in advance and think critically. You know, what is something going to lead to? And the third thing. Um, which I think is very important um, is critical thinking. As I said, it's really important to think critically about what you want to work on, what is going to bring to the world and what kind of people you need to deal with in order to succeed. So these three things, as I said, first of all, do you want to work on this? Second of all, are you ready to kind of, you know, take the, take the shot, take the responsibility? And um, the third is, do you really think this is something that makes sense in you know in the larger scheme of things? 
Okay, thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, for this interview. It was uh, really nice to meet you. And uh, thanks for having me. I wish you good luck and uh, good health and uh, yeah, uh, a really, really great hackathon with uh, great products. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the projects. It's going to be really interesting. So, really excited. And yeah, shout out if, if you still haven't decided to join the hackathon, please do. Give it a shot. It's gonna cost you nothing, and it's big. It's guaranteed you're gonna have fun. Thank you. Nice message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, okay. and uh, have a nice day. Thanks. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.